turn on your cameras if you want to or not. Um, I'm Jill Harrison. I'm the Associate um, Chair of Undergraduate Studies in the Sociology Department, and it's lovely to see you, if, if only by name, if nothing else. Um, I don't know if I know any of you based on these names that I'm looking at. I teach classes in environmental sociology to undergraduates. There's another face, nice to see you. Um, I also teach a class called Food and Society as an upper division sociology class. I also teach our graduate students various courses in qualitative research methods and environmental sociology. And I do research on environmental conflict, um, especially from perspectives of justice. So conflicts over environmental inequalities and environmental justice um, in the contemporary United States in particular. And as associate chair of undergraduate studies, I help to direct the undergraduate program in sociology. And we have organized this event like we've done for the past few semesters as a way to welcome to sociology. Some of you are new sociology majors or minors. Some of you are thinking about becoming a sociology major or minor and all of the above is great. We are here, I've brought a few of my colleagues here together to just talk with you a little bit about some of the different programs that we offer through sociology and to answer questions that you have about the major or the minor or some of these other specialty programs that we offer through our department. So um, I know this is a hard time. I wish we were here um, together in Ketchum eating pizza together, maybe next semester, later on in the semester, maybe we'll be able to do something like that or at least hopefully next academic year. But we are making the most of it in sociology and coming together through various means, remote, um, if nothing else, and we're here to support you as faculty and staff of the program and are happy to help answer your questions either on this call or directly. You can reach out to any of us. So again, my name is Jill Harrison. Welcome. And I've got a few folks here this evening to talk with you. Um, first, we're going to turn things over to Michael Lynn, who some of you may know. He is our super wonderful undergraduate advisor. He does the majority of the advising for sociology majors and minors. Um, he's a fabulous person. And he's gonna talk with you about the requirements for the sociology major and minor. And also we'll talk with you about how to contact him and reach him and um, meet up with him for advising. And he will also talk with you about study abroad, which is apparently still happening. And then we'll turn things over from there to Glenda Walden, our fabulous, one of our fabulous instructors. We'll talk with you about internships and certificates associated with our department. And then I will turn things over to Lori Hunter, our esteemed and wonderful department chair, who will talk with you about the honors program because she, in addition to being chair and doing a lot of things associated with that, she also directs our honors program for undergraduate students. So, um, and then also on the call, we have Bridget Selinger, whose um, photo is her really cute puppy dog. Um, and Bridget is our undergraduate program assistant. So you may hear from her through email um, for one reason or another. She helps to troubleshoot all kinds of um, little problems that might creep up in terms of enrollment or deadlines, things like that. So Bridget's another fabulous member of our team. So um, I think I'll turn things over to you, Michael. Right. Thank you, Jill. And, and hello, everybody. Glad you could uh, make it today. Uh, as Jill said, I'm Michael Lynn. I've been advising in the social department for a little over 20 years now. And uh, it's been it's been absolute real uh, pleasure. I'm sure I know some of you that are showing up here and some uh, meeting for the first time. I'm going to do a share screen and go to the main sociology department website under undergraduate um, students. And I put the link to this website in the chat. So um, this is a good website to bookmark because it has links to a few things that I'm going to talk about and that others are going to talk about in a few minutes as well. Number one, there's a really nice little two minute video on here. It's very nicely uh, produced. Why study Soch at uh, CU Boulder? I suggest that you uh, watch it. 
If you're interested in a little more about the skills that you learn in the sociology major, they're listed uh, down here in the study of, of sociology rather. And then over here, there's really good links. That's why this website is so uh, valuable. Uh, links to, for example, I'm gonna go through the requirements in a moment here, but also links to the internship program, the honors program, and then we'll get to um, education abroad here in a little bit, which I'm a huge fan of, by the way. So let's start off with the um, requirements. The requirements in the major are really, really simple, easy to navigate and easy to weave in with your overall uh, requirements here at CU. There's four required classes that you can see up here in the major. We'll get to the to the minor in a little bit. So intro, maybe most of you, if not all of you have taken this class or maybe taking this class currently, the broad survey class. Um, classical theory is open to sophomores and above that have completed intro. And for a lot of students that are going after SOCH, this becomes their first, or doing the SOCH major rather, this is their first upper division class that they take at CU. We have a statistics requirement and we do allow, if anybody's thinking of doing a double major like in psych or they have stats coming in from any one of a number of other departments, we accept non soshi stats to take care of this requirement, although most of our majors end up doing this course. Then after that is research methods. So these are your uh, 12 hours of required classes. Then you have a minimum of 24 hours of electives down here. The upper division ones you do mainly in your junior, senior year. Some become available to sophomores, typically not for freshmen. And then down in this area, that's, yeah, the lower upper is right here. And then the lower is for when you're beginning. So uh, in your first year, maybe second year, you can take a number of 1,000, 2,000 level electives in a variety of different areas. Uh, classes are drawn from five different areas in this department. And you can choose to be either an unofficial specialist, which means you're just taking a bunch of classes associated with that area. Or you can be, if you're a generalist and you love everything so, you can go all over the map. So we have classes in the areas of criminology, sex and gender, population and health, race and ethnicity, and uh, environmental sociology. So again, you can either unofficially specialize or go all over the place. So that's just a quick look. We don't have to go into any uh, great detail here. Everything's on the website about the major. And I'm happy to talk to any one of you that are thinking about this uh, in more detail. The minor is half the hours of the major. It's 18 hours total. The one re required class is the intro class, uh, Introduction to Sociology. And then the rest is electives and you have to do at least nine hours of upper division. Again, these 3,000 and 4,000 level. So uh, a little more uh, streamlined than, uh, than the major. So that's a quick look at just the overall uh, degree requirements. And again, I'm happy to talk with you, uh, any of you about uh, these things in more detail, of course, and how it might work with your overall plans, what, you, what else you might be doing, et cetera. Let's hop to the abroad website. So notice one click and then one more click takes you directly to the abroad, study abroad website. Um, I'm a huge fan of abroad. I was able, never able to do abroad as an undergrad student, but I've done a lot of international traveling in the past 20 uh, plus years and there's nothing more better, I think, than to get out in the world and to uh, uh, to get out of your country and spend some time and see how other people live and do things, etc. cetera. Um, so if you're interested, the first thing that you wanna do is what's called Abroad 101. So you go to this website or you're just clicking within the website and you log in and watch a 20 minute video. And then you take a short little quiz afterwards to show that you didn't actually sleep through the video. And once you've done that, then you can certainly start exploring programs on your own, clicking them down in here. But I suggest connecting with an advisor and you can do a Zoom appointment with a live education abroad uh, advisor and start talking about places you're interested, your major, 
various things like that. They can help you to sort of dive into this whole thing, what's involved, how to plan out, et cetera, et cetera. There are sociology departments um, all over the world. Therefore, there are sociology courses offered um, all over the world. So a lot of our majors do abroad and a lot of our majors can find that what they do on abroad works beautifully with completing uh, major requirements, other requirements in gen ed, et cetera. And it's just one of the best things you can do overall in my opinion, so. Okay, I'm gonna hand this off, uh, back to Jill, to Professor Harrison, and I'll stop my share. Thank you, Michael. Um, I was just taking some notes here after looking through the chat. Did you mention how to, folks can contact you and set up a meeting with you? Oh my God, you know what? I'll put um, uh, that information, I'll throw it in the chat right now. Super, thank you. Um, does anyone on the line have questions for Michael? About requirements for the major or minor or study abroad? Maybe I could just mention real quick. So I'm gonna put my email um, in, in the chat. I also have what's called open hours. So if you're not a declared, if you're a declared major or minor, then you can make an appointment with me through Buff Portal Advising. But if you're not yet doing that, or if you have any questions on any other stuff, you can either email me directly and we can set up a, a day and time that's typically just takes a few emails back and forth. But I also have on Monday afternoons from one to three, what's called open hours. And I will include my uh, Zoom link in the chat. And then you just be between those times on Monday, you just simply pop into the room just as though you're here in person and we can, um, we can have a chat that way as well too. Thank you, Michael. You know, I realized after I gave an introduction that I didn't actually say anything about sociology, about why I like it, how I understand what it is. It's one of these majors where your parents, if you tell them you're interested in sociology, they may say, what is that? That's what my mom still says. Sometimes she's getting better at it. Um, so I thought maybe I should just say a word or two about what I like about sociology. Um, so a few things um, about why this field is near and dear to my heart is that I feel like it helps me gain a new set of perspectives about the world. Um, it helps me understand what's going on around me and why, which can feel really valuable and during times like this, when there's just so much happening that feels really confusing or upsetting. Um, I also feel like sociology helps us to understand how societies are structured and also how people's experiences within them vary um, considerably. There's a lot of diversity of human experience even within one given society. Um, and then sociology, this leads me to what I see as kind of a third major key important part of sociology, which is that it helps us understand inequalities. So how do these, what are the different lines of inequality within a given society, such as along lines of race, gender, class, um, and other forms of social status? And why do those exist? What are the different kind of material and cultural things that produce them? And what can we do about them um, in order to redress them? And then the sociology major, some, there's some different things that we have um, strive for as sociologists, as faculty in this program to teach you um, as our majors. We teach our students critical thinking skills, research design skills, data collection skills, data analysis skills, also skills in oral communication and written communication. We, these are skills that you can apply to a lot of different fields that you go into. So that's an important thing to tell your folks if they're wondering about your choice of sociology. Um, also, another thing that employers say that they really value in um, new folks coming in to the labor market is they're looking for workers who understand diversity and the diversity of human experience and working with diverse um, uh, groups of people in the workplace. So these, that kind of skill is seen as crucial for understanding 
um, how to work well with others in the current business environment. Um, and then I would also just say that a sociology degree gives you a lot of freedom in what kinds of career paths you might want to explore. I imagine that most of you probably don't know yet what you want to do when you grow up. And um, also work is changing. Jobs are changing. The kinds of jobs that will become available in a few years, we, we can't actually anticipate what all of those will be. So a flexible career like sociology that helps you gain a bunch of different skills can be really valuable in that way. Okay, so that's, um, I'll just stop there with that and hand things over to Glenda Walden, um, one of our instructors in the department. That's actually a great segue for the internship program, which I am the coordinator of. Uh, I teach a lot of the undergraduate classes that are lower division classes. I teach a lot of the interesting classes. I teach race and ethnicity. I teach sexuality. I teach drugs. I teach deviance. I get all the fun stuff, basically. Um, and that's not really what drew me to sociology. What drew me to sociology was I was a working class kid. I was a first generation college student. And it was really helpful when I landed in a sociology class and was able to put my individual experiences into this larger context of it wasn't just me, it was actually my position in a stratified society that had me see the world in a particular way, that shaped my opportunities in particular ways. And it was like, aha, I'm home. And so I think my goal in staying, staying active as a sociologist and then eventually teaching sociology was to provide that tool to others who may be you know, on the outsides of the main dominant, if you will, groups in society and for whom they, they are figuring out and doing their best to figure out how the system works and why it isn't quite working for them a lot of the time. And I think sociology is one of those great tools for allowing folks access to understanding the system and their place in the system. And, you know, the secret agenda is so they can change the system for the better and not just make their lives better, but also make the whole thing better for everyone. So there's my rah rah sociology. Here's what a sociology major can do. Now, the more practical thing about what are you going to do with a sociology major, the internship program provides a lot of options for. The, for answering or for exploring that question. So I'm gonna share my screen with you as well, cause I have a quickie little, quickie little uh, presentation. Sorry about that. A little bit slow on the uptake. So in case you were wondering why you might want to work at an internship in in a, in, with a sociology bent, <coughs> Uh, there are a few benefits to actually taking on an internship. And, and those include obviously career exploration. So you get to work in a field that you may be interested in working in eventually. Now, it may be that what you discover after working your internship is, I never wanna work in that field again. And that is valuable information to know after 15 weeks, rather than getting yourself a job and moving across the country for what you think is gonna be your dream job and then finding you hate it. So an internship, however it turns out for you is valuable information. But if you really do love it, it could also be possible entree into your career. This could be the organization you wind up working for or a stepping stone to another organization or the next degree or the next um, step in, in securing a longer term career. It also will give you valuable work experience. So one of the main things about uh, our internships is you'll enter into a contract with, the, with your employer, if you will, they're generally not paid internships, but your work, your internship supervisor, and you will have some learning objectives. And you will share those learning objectives for your internship with your supervisor. And then you will talk about how your duties that you'll be assigned at that internship are going to help you meet those learning objectives. So you won't just be making coffee and filling envelopes or what have you, right? You'll be doing some, some things that are designed to give you the kinds of skill building that you can then translate onto your resume, or if you're going to grad school, onto your Vita, 
So there, there should be a, a direct resume or VITA payoff for you from working this internship. Also, you should be able to, if you do your internship well, you'll get a great reference from somebody in a more work related field. So you might have letters of reference or recommendation from university faculty through being an excellent student. And this is a great way to have someone address your maturity, your adaptability, your team skills, your work uh, per persona. Also out of the academic requirements, you'll get a solid writing sample in your final analysis paper that you can then submit as a writing sample for grad school or law school. And you'll get three to six units of upper division sociology credit towards that major or that minor that Michael was talking about. In addition, you'll get, you could find experience in a variety of fields. I have approved, I think there's really only been one or two positions that a student didn't justify to me that that worked as a great internship in sociology. And you do that justification on your contract by convincing me that this position is going to help you with your learning objectives and your career exploration as it relates to you as a sociologist. So we have intern, we've placed people in criminology, in probation, and the probation department here in Boulder is quite, uh, quite great about actually creating deputy probation officers. So you'll have clients that you'll be overseeing um, with supervision from uh, other probation officers, but you'll get some real hands-on experience there. We have internships in the public defender's office, in the DA's office, in victims advocates programs, in uh, correction facilities, and in the Corey Wise Innocence Project here at CU Boulder, which looks great if you're going to law school, which again, sociology is one of those majors that often is a stepping stone towards law school and legal careers. So some great uh, internships in the restorative justice program also here on campus. So uh, again, law and criminology is one of, the, one of the possible careers with a sociology degree that we have quite a bit of internships in. Politics, animal welfare, health and human services, crisis interventions such as crisis hotlines and other, other forms of victim advocate services. We have plenty of folks who are in educational programs as, as interns. We have folks placed in hospitals and both administ or all administrative and medical shadowing kinds of internships. Those are primarily with the healthcare and resilience certificate program, but those are also on, on board for possible medical careers. And I'm hearing more and more medical schools are actually looking at sociology majors, double majors or minors, because they don't just want somebody who knows the sciences and, and um, biology, they want somebody who also can speak to people and who knows about the social context in which patients and clients may find themselves. So that sociology major or minor can be a plus towards med school, especially with an internship in one of these fields. We also get a lot of folks who are double majors in psychology or are psych or are soci minors with a psych major. And so we work with some mental health services and have some internships in those kinds of offices as well. We have research assistantship opportunities. So working with faculty on their research projects. And that is, again, is a great internship if you're thinking about graduate school and you're wondering what research is going to be like. Fabulous. There are some international opportunities as well for doing research, uh, excuse me, for doing assist, uh, internships. Those are primarily available for the School for International Training. They're available through the Education Abroad website. Uh, we also have quite a few in, in, uh, internships in private industry. So you don't have to work with a nonprofit or a governmental agency to have an internship in sociology. We have people working in kind of social entrepreneur startup kind of situations. We've placed people in the music and entertainment and industry, human resources departments, advertising, marketing and PR kind of situations. And then we also have 
different kinds of internships or people have worked different kinds of internships that aren't necessarily di directly related to working with the public or working with clients. Some of our folks who have worked in nonprofits have worked in event planning, fundraising, social media campaigns. So there's a variety of, of fields and a variety of tasks that you have access to getting experience with. So if that all is beginning to look exciting, there are some background questions you might have, such as, well, who can actually enroll in this internship course? And essentially, all you need to be is a junior or senior class standing at the time of, of the internship, have a minimum GPA of 2.0, and either be a sociology major or a minor, or a participant in one of our certificate programs. And I'll briefly mention the certificate programs here on the next slide. Um, but uh, so you, if you're not a sociology major or minor, but you are enrolled in our care, health and, Resil and resilience certificate or our certificate in social innovation or our animals and society certificate, you're still eligible to earn internship upper division sociology credit uh, in the inter internship program. And then finally, you'll need to have successfully completed, which means earning a C or higher in if you're a certificate student in the core certificate class or for soci majors or minors the intro soci class and one upper division class so it doesn't need to be theory it just needs to be a upper division class and the reason for that is we just want to make sure that you have some upper division sociological theory in some field under your belt so you have that experience drawing from a field of literature and a field of theory to do your final analysis paper for for the internship class now i briefly mentioned the certificates and so let me just um, point out that we do have some certificate programs in sociology so if you are a sociology major or minor you can enroll in these certificates and receive a little more specialized or track training, if you will, in taking a particular, a particular um, line of courses that are designed to give you a basic level of expertise in a particular field. And uh, so the ones that we have available are care, health, and resilience. And this is designed to prepare people who are really going into what are sometimes called the helping professions whether that is the medical care um, field or counseling and social work, teaching, education, the ministry, if you're going to be working with a faith community. Oh yeah, that's another area that we've had people work. Oh, we lost you, Glenda. Internships oh, in are with their faith. There I am. Yeah, you're back. back. We lost you for just a moment. Oh, I don't know what's going on on campus. I came on campus, so I would be stable. So, um, so yeah, so again, a variety of those frontline working with people in crisis kind of situation. The certificate in social innovation is really all about social change and creative social change. So many of these internships are with nonprofits or NGOs, non-governmental offices. Uh, we have had several people working with the UN in development and sustainability projects, which if you can get your foot in the door with the UN, that is a sweet career. I'm here to advocate for that. Uh, and also working with social entrepreneurs. So the social innovation certificate has some connections established in those fields and an internship is possible towards that certificate. Again, Animals and Society is another one of our certificate programs. Primarily, you'd be working with Dr. Leslie Irvine in that domain. She supervises the internships in that certificate program. And so, uh, again, those opportunities are, are extensive. Uh, and we have contacts that work with equine therapy, wildlife management, and in various wildlife rehabilitation centers. So those are all some possible careers that might involve a sociology major or minor as well. Now, about the internship class itself. So you can't enroll in the internship class. Only I can enroll you or bridge it through me with my approval after some paperwork has been accomplished. So the course is offered every single semester, fall, spring, and summer. 
The summer course is quite affordable uh, and can be done anywhere in the United States. So uh, again, the details on that, I, if you contact me, if you email me and I'll put my email up in the chat line as well, I can give you more specifics, but our internship program in the summer actually costs about half what a typical summer class at CU class costs. So it's actually a really cost efficient way of getting three to six units of credit out of out of way in the summer and getting some really valuable work experience. So I really I do highly encourage summer as a, a great opportunity for doing internships. Again, you can earn three to six units and you can do that over one or two semesters. In order to earn three units, you would need to work 90 hours at your internship site. And then for additional hours, it's just for every 40 hours additionally in that semester you work, it's an extra unit of credit, up to six units of credit. And if you only want to work 90 hours that semester, it's about six hours a week. You can take three units in one semester and three units in the next semester. And so there's a, it's very flexible with how, how you earn the units and over the course of time that you earn the units. In the class, you'll find it's fairly easy academic requirements in addition to your workload. We do every other in-class or remote meetings, depending on the semester and their requirements. Usually in the fall and the spring, we meet in person without COVID. In the summer, we do it remotely so that if you went home for the summer and, or if you knew you were going to be living in another state after you graduated and you wanted to get work contacts in that state, you could be in that state working your internship during the summer. There are online discussions that the students participate in. They are tasked with getting their resume revamped with the help of career services in such a way that it really highlights their, their internship experience and prepares them for their next step. They do one page of a reflection paper kind of early on with some observations about their internship that they may want to explore for the final analysis paper. And then they do a 15-ish page analysis paper for, as their final product. They also do a self-evaluation of their internship experience, which allows me to get an evaluation of their organization, of their supervisors, and allows for a little integration of learning. So th those are the basic academic requirements of the course. Not a big deal, actually, in the grand scheme of things, because you're going to be working your tail off at your internship for most of the hours. About 60% of the grade comes from you completing your hours at your internship site and your internship supervisor's evaluation of you. So again, I'll, I'll have these links post in the chat, posted in the chat line for more information about the, about the internships. And on this web page, on the, the link that is listed here, you'll find all the paperwork that you need. You'll find the application, you'll find the contract, and you'll find the list of possible internship sites, which is just a list of folks that we've worked with in the past, students have reported good experiences with, it's not the exhaustive list. If you have other organizations in mind that you would like to work with, they're probably fine. So if you want to get the ball rolling, the application due dates are for the spring, December 1st. And the application is simply a, do you meet the requirements and do you have an idea about what field you might wanna be working in and what organizations you might wanna work with? And that helps me support you in securing a internship suggesting organizations that you can contact, that sort of thing. So after you've turned that application into me, start contacting organizations and seeing what's available. When you've secured a position, you'll fill out the contract. You'll review that with your internship supervisor. You'll both sign it. You'll get it back to me. I'll enroll you in the units. And that's the simple down and dirty of it. It's a, a fantastic opportunity. Now, for those of you who may not be as interested in the direct work experience, you think you wanna to go to graduate school or you're really interested in the research end of things, I want to remind you that while most of these internships are unpaid, they're mostly volunteer positions are unpaid, there are a few paid ones that doesn't uh, exclude you from being able to to earn credit for it if you happen to be lucky enough to find a paid position, but the vast majority of these are unpaid. However, there is money available for undergraduates doing research. 
And so if you would like to take on your own research project, there's support at the university available for that through the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program, what the cool kids call Europe. And so the applications come due pretty early in the spring semester. So if you think you might want to be doing your own independent research in the summer or the following year, so academic year 2021 to 2022, now's the time to be thinking about it and kind of talking with faculty members potentially about what a research project might look like, what might be interesting, or is there even a possible mentor relationship with these faculty members all so that you can get your little application in they're usually about February um, so the due dates will probably be posted on the Europe site they don't even have the due dates for 2021 up yet but they'll probably be getting those up in the next few weeks uh, and so so having some ideas about a research question a field that you want to research in and some ideas about how you might go about investigating that topic would be a great idea to start talking about with faculty members that you'd like to work with what this can give you is on a tremendous foundation for going to graduate school or law school having funded research on your record is a big deal. Gwen, that's so, so much. And that's such a fabulous transition to the honors program as well. Yeah. Since there's a lot of yeah. um, continuity there. Um, the, there's a couple of quick questions for you in the chat. The first one from Yasmin, um, each, so the question is, does each student do their own internship, but all students are in the same class? That's correct. Um, and then the second question, Glenda, if you could answer that, can you do a summer internship the summer after your sophomore year? As long as your units would place you at a junior level. So as soon as you are junior level, so as soon as you've completed those sophomore units and you're now a junior, yep. Awesome, thank you. Any other questions? from the crowd for Glenda about internships or certificates or about the Europe program? Um, so would you like, e I would email you before I even like applied to an internship? Uh, you would, you could, uh, you don't have to. Uh, you could fill out the application and say, and you'll notice on the application it says, have you contacted any organizations? So if you go on the website where we talk about the internship programs, um, it will have a document called possible internship sites. If you see an organization that looks interesting to you, go ahead and contact them as soon as you like. Thank you. Um, I just had a question to clarify. Um, we're, we are like allowed to do like, actual in like they can be in another state correct like if i go home for um the summer i can do it there right yes okay sweet thanks sure and i just re-put up the links and my email if you have any other questions so i'll turn it over to lori thank you glenda lori thank you okay. yes yeah, you bet. Hi, everybody, and thanks for being here. Um, so I am here to talk about the honors program, and I guess I should also say why I was drawn to sociology. Um, I was actually a journalism major when I was your age and took sociology classes as part of, a, you know, the gen ed stuff. And boy, it made my heart sing. So like Jill, I just, I was really so drawn to it, and Glenda as well. And it was actually a theory class, um, which is interesting because uh, I don't teach theory. Uh, and it was a theory class that was sort of my light bulb went off and I had that aha moment and the idea that you could see social issues from multiple perspectives, the very same phenomenon, you know, but interpret them differently just blew my mind and really continues to blow my mind. I've been doing it a long time and still love it. So it's great that you guys are, are curious. Um, so I'm speaking to the honors program. Um, the honors program, oh, I also have a little slide. I just have one, don't let me see that slide. Let me see slide. <clears throat> oh my. <clears throat> I 
Okay, boy, you'd think that I would have had this down by now. How long have we been doing this? <clears throat> I have too many windows open. That's what it is. <clears throat> there we are. Yeah, too many windows. So here you go. Um, sociology honors, I think is an amazing way, just like Linda's talking about the uh, internship to really sort of make yourself stand out. And what I think is so cool about honors, like internships also, you get to really bring your course coursework to life. So it's a chance for you to to dive into a research question that has really intrigued you. And so I think of it as, you know, throughout your coursework here at CU, there's gonna be certain things that really pique your curiosity. And pursuing honors is a chance for you to dig a little bit deeper than you would get to probably within the context of a class. So, um, what you do is it's in your senior year, this honors program is, it's a three credit class each of those semesters. So it's six credits. Um, and the class is sort of a, a, a support group, if you will. We don't meet every single week. We meet a lot of the weeks, especially at the beginning to help get everybody going in the same direction, but we don't meet every single week. It's a support group. We iterate ideas and we help each other along. Um, I should start, I guess, with the requirements, 3.3 overall G GPA and a 3.3 in sociology courses, and you need to have taken um, theory and methods. You apply for it um, in early April of your junior year, and you would do your honors program throughout your senior year. So in your late junior year, what you would do is you'd fill out the application. You can be in touch with me beforehand, and I can help you brainstorm ideas for projects. Um, I would find you, help you find a faculty advisor. Um, I'm going to get rid of this because I really like seeing you all, even though you're just squares <laughs> for the most part. Um, uh, so I would help you find a faculty advisor, uh, someone who aligned with your uh, project and could provide some expertise. I also am faculty support for all of the honor students. And then you would have a third committee member who would be from outside of sociology. So we would all be here to provide you support. Over the summer, um, so the summer prior to your senior year, you sort of work with your idea, maybe read some literature. If you intend to collect your own data through a survey or doing interviews, you will develop a, a human subjects review protocol. You'd have to have that approved by the um, fall semester. And then throughout fall semester, you continue to do your lit review, you gather your data. Um, by the end of fall semester, I really hope everyone has their data collected. We all create timelines together. We check in with each other. You've got a tremendous amount of support to make this happen. Um, and then when spring comes, you do your data analysis and your write up. And then there's something that sounds scary, but I really don't want you to be scared. It's called a defense. And the defense is really, you present your research in front of your faculty committee who has been there helping you along you know, this whole way. And it should be great because it's a chance for you to really talk about this work that you've poured yourself into over the course of this academic year. So you present your work, we ask you a few questions and uh, what happens is you ultimately graduate with one of three different levels of honors. There's cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude. And the level of honors depends on your GPA, on how the project sort of went through the course of the whole year and how your defense went. And then you would be um, assigned an honors level at graduation and you would be very proud and you should be very proud. It's really an accomplishment. I mean, you're, you're developing an independent research project but we're here all the way to support you. So um, I wanted to give you some examples uh, quickly of the kinds of topics that students have been investigating. This is my second year. So this is sort of a combination of last year and this year. One young lady this year is studying volunteerism in the context of COVID. She's doing work with a local food bank to really understand how people's motivations sort of might shift in the context of what we're going through right now. Um, one student is interested in criminology and is studying the impact of alternative sentencing, pro sentencing programs on recidivism. So he's doing a, a lot of uh, great work looking at different sort of approaches to um, the criminal justice system. Another one is looking at the constructions of gender and the way that they vary across cultures. So a really interesting topic as well. Social movements. Jill last year advised a young lady who was looking at the rights uh, of nature movement, um, which was super interesting. And she's gone off to a fabulous research job up in Fort Collins. She's just doing great. 
Um, a young lady this year is studying the anti-vaccination movements, which is really important too in the context of COVID. Um, another student studied refugee support organizations. So you can see, I mean, you take classes in this department, right? In crim, in gender, um, in environment, and all of those topics are represented within the topics that the students choose. So um, let's see. I think you could start thinking about if you are interested in an independent research project. You know, when I was in grad school, so like 5 million years ago, um, when I was sitting in classes and there was a topic that piqued my curiosity, I had a little RQ I put off on the margins of my paper while I was taking notes, which stood for research questions. And boy, did I have a million of them. You know, the kinds of things that I was just like, God, I'd like to know more about that. So that's something you could start right now if you are interested in doing an independent research project and you would just need to, to zoom in once you got further along in your career. Um, I think I could probably leave it there. Thanks, Lori. There's a question sure. from Molly in the chat. She, okay. Um, is it possible to take the honors class if we plan to graduate a semester early? I would actually encourage you to start the honors program then the, the second semester of your junior year. I think it would be really hard to pull together a thesis in the context of a semester, but certainly you can start it um, a semester early. Molly, with that, I don't know if that timing would work for you, but be in touch with me. Um, so you really want to give yourself a year to develop the project, um, but you can start that year when you like. Wonderful. Thank you. Other questions about the honors program or any questions for any of us about either anything we've discussed or other questions you have relating to sociology? It's great you're all here. I'll just say too, I mean, whenever, whatever you decide to go out and do, having honors or internships or anything on your resume sets you apart as a go-getter. So it's not just if you're going to grad school, obviously that's great too, but um, you know, having these kind of activities really set you apart and it's a really a, a great benefit that the department has to offer you. I actually did have a quick question. Um, what would you you say are the benefits of doing grad school versus not? Lori, let's tackle that. <laughs> sure. That's a good question. Tom, it's a great question. And it's also a question I think you really want to um, grapple with before you make that step because it's a, you know, it's a, it's a commitment. Um, I think key, Tom, is thinking about what is your dream job and what do you need to get there? Uh, and for me, I actually was out in the work, working world in the corporate America for five years doing public relations work. I told you I did journalism and, and sociology combined. And um, you know what? It didn't feed my heart. And uh, to be honest, I, I just knew that wasn't the place for me. I didn't know exactly what my place was, but sociology spoke to me um, in a way that, that made me think there was something great I could do with it, even though I wasn't sure what that was. Um, but, you know, I, I actually pulled up, um, we should make available on the website some list of the kinds of jobs that you qualify for at different levels of education. So with a master's in sociology, a lot of people go into um, counseling, social work, um, research positions, like the, the young lady I mentioned who went to Fort Collins, she had a bachelor's degree, but she got a great research job, a PhD in sociology you know, can take six, seven years. And that positions you for, for higher level research jobs, teaching at the university scale um, or things, you know, higher level consulting things too. But so what's your dream job? And you don't have to know that now, but you know, it's sort of fun to look out there and see what's available and, and you go, oh my gosh, that sounds so cool. Well then figure out what it requires to get there. Great. Jill, did you have something well, to add? I just think that's really great. I mean, I that's that map maps onto my experience too. Um, I knew there were a lot of there were certain topics that I was most excited about from like when I was an undergrad, and I just worked a bunch of different jobs. Some of them were paid, some were not. I discovered, like Glenda pointed out, I really didn't like some of them, and I also discovered that others I re 
just really um, made me feel excited about the work that I was doing. And one of those was at a nonprofit um, organization in Oakland, California called Food First, which does all this really great advocacy around um, hunger and um, inequality as it relates to food and agriculture around the world. And I looked around at the people who were actually getting paid to work there and they all had PhDs. And so I went to them and talked with them about, you know, what does it take to get a PhD? What is a PhD? I really had no idea. Um, it's going to school. Just the short answer is you're going to school for about six to seven more years. But a big chunk of that is diving deep into your own research project with the help of faculty who help you learn how to do it and how to conduct it. And that to me sounded super exciting and I really, really enjoyed the process. But there's other graduate programs that are very different from that. Math, a lot of master's programs take a year or two years, maybe three tops. Um, a lot of them are, um, aren't so kind of research focused or the projects that you do would be maybe team-based, more applied projects. So there are also a lot of different kinds of grad programs. Um, I would say that it's good to, you want to have a good strong sense of excitement about a particular path before you go into a graduate program. Don't go into a graduate program just hoping that you'll find your interest in it. You want to have your interest first because it is a long commitment. But yeah, feel free, Tom, to reach out to any of us or if there's like a certain field that you're interested in, I can help connect you to a faculty member in that field if you want to talk more about grad school. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Likewise. And I was thinking, um, I was thinking too, there's a really interesting transition. I think it's a, a neat way to think about it. You know, in undergrad, you're also busy. I mean, you get to take a mi major, right, or a minor. So you do some sort of concentration study, but you're also all over the board, which is what it's supposed to be, right? There's all gen ed so that you really become broad thinkers um, with a nice solid knowledge base. And in grad school, you dive in, like Joe was saying, and that's a really, really neat opportunity um, to dig a little bit deeper into what it is you find most passionate about. And that's where I see the honors actually as a, a miniature version of that. So throughout grad, undergrad, we talk about um, being consumers of knowledge, right? You guys are learning stuff and it's cool stuff and it's all over the place. But when you step into grad school, a lot of times you, you take a transition to becoming a producer of knowledge, right? So you become somebody who is creating the science and the knowledge that we're learning, you know, within the context of the university. So that's, that's a neat transition um, and a really important one and a really cool one. If it's what you wanna do. Thank you, Lori. Other questions? Okay, well, I will stick around on the call for a few more minutes. So feel free to stick around and ask me a question. You're also welcome to send any of us emails. I'll be happy to stick around too for a few minutes. Okay, have a great, so great. night, everyone. Thanks. I'll go have some pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.